Hey, welcome to the broadcast. Let's see. Hey, everybody. I'm Simone. I'm the data analytics manager for African Ancestry. Welcome to our weekly broadcast. We're just going to give people a few minutes to join us. Hey, Michelle. Patrick. <laughs> hey, Gina. Hey, Janine. Thanks for joining. All right. Y'all know y'all here to hear Janet Jackson. Hey, Larry. Thanks for joining. Dante. I recognize your names. So I'm Simone. Again, I'm the data analytics manager for African Ancestry. And that's just a really fancy way of saying that I'm the person that prepares your results. <laughs> and um, really, I usher your swabs and your information through the process of getting a result, finding out who you are and where you're from. So um, we are doing a staff takeover and it starts with me. I'm the first person. I'm the guinea pig. Um, so our Uber producer, Ty, is sitting with bated breath trying to make sure I don't <laughs> completely mess this up. Um, but we're going to cover, you know, a few interesting topics today. Next week, it'll be Kelly, right? Yeah. So next week, it'll be Kelly and she will be talking about what time? Testing multiple lines. Okay. <laughs> and this week I'll be talking about how to make the process of going through the ans African ancestry process successful um, and as seamless as possible. Because as you can imagine, this is really important information that we're sharing with you. It's a really important process that you are going through. And we want to make sure that it goes as smoothly as possible because there are a lot of moving parts. So, um, Gina, I'm doing fine. How are you? Okay. So before we get into what I'm here to talk about, we have a few housekeeping things. Again, Ty wants to make sure I don't screw this up. So <laughs> um, I am going to do what I'm told. So you'll quickly learn that. Ty and I have a very, very, very strong relationship of her trying to tell me what to do and I'm not doing it most times or pushing back. But this is a case where I have to do what Ty says because she's the Uber producer. She knows what's going on. So um, first thing I want to make sure is that we recap what's happened in the last week or so. So last week we did um, an all staff show where we shared our Christmas picks or our holiday picks. Um, specifically black owned products and businesses um, were the focus and kind of keeping in line with that last weekend, Gina was present at the Cometamorphosis conference. Um, it was actually on December 7th, what, December 7th through 9th. Um, and it's safe to say we had an awesome time. In a nutshell, Cometamorphosis was a conference set up for people who have traveled to Kemet with Dr. Tony Browder, Anthony Browder, and people who are interested in taking that trip and just coming together as a collective and learning about um, how to be more economically empowered, um, understanding genealogy to a degree, anthropology. Uh, so Gina was there, African Ancestry had a presence. I'm sure if you were out and about there, you saw Tammy at some point, you maybe even saw Ty. So we had a awesome time and it ended up being a good, good, good experience. Um, something else that I want to mention this week is today is Independence Day for the country of Kenya. Um, quick little, you know, fun fact about Kenya. 
the, the country itself is comparable to the size of Texas. And it holds over 40 ethnic groups. Um, Kenya is actually not a result that we see all the time, but there are people who get a Kenyan result. And I think I've seen two or three um, ethnic groups that I've never heard of. <laughs> Most people haven't heard of in common conversation, which speaks to the, the 40 that are um, currently living there. Um, so trivia. So Ty, you make sure I say this right. Um, so we do a trivia question every week. And this week, if you answer correctly, I have to make sure I have all my, my supplies. You can get a fun, you can win a find your tribe t-shirt, which is really cool. I guess I could take this out, huh? Let's see. So you could win this dope shirt if you can answer the trivia question I'm about to share with you. Okay. What language does the, I don't know how to say this, Todd. <laughs> You Shahidi come from, and what does it mean? What language does the word you Shahidi come from, and what does it mean? So, guys, think on that. Answer. I'll let you know if it's right, and we'll get your t shirt to you. Um, hey, Tasia. So, Tasia is African ancestry family. Baby Lamb, is that her nickname now? <laughs> so she is baby lamb she's the youngest in the office and she is awesome 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 um support um but let's jump into why i'm here why i was tapped to take over today um i want to share some information with you about how to make your african ancestry experience successful smooth um and actually a fun one because it can be fun one thing is we get a lot of questions about how long the process takes. Why does it take so long? Um, how we communicate with our family members. Um, really any and everything surrounding what actually happens in order for us to go from you having a question in your mind about your identity to actually getting an answer. Um, so I'm going to give you a few tips on how to make that possible, how to make it easy. But I'm also going to go through the actual process to go from wondering who you are to finding out who you are via our our test. Looks like we have some questions. Janine, I'm trying to see what it says. Hmm. Oh, so Janine. So Janine. We already have a winner, right? <laughs> well, she has the meaning that she knows language. What is the language? So, so. Okay. So, Janine, you, you know the meaning of the word, but what is the language? So, I'll give you a second on that. Um, but back to what we were, I was discussing before. So, <laughs> so we talk about the process all the time around here. Usually when people hear the word process or they hear data or anything, their eyes glaze over. But it's really, really important that um, we take the step seriously as far as getting the results for you all. So the first thing is you, the first step in this entire process is you deciding that you even want to take the test. And it can be for a number of reasons. You know, it can be you saw a famous person took it. So, you know, we have like Chad with Bozeman, for instance, who took the test years ago um, and is a star of, of Black Panther. We also had um, Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones took the test. I, I'm not sure how long ago, but he is one um, of our notables. And Robin Roberts, she's taking the test. As a matter of fact, she's from Liberia. So, you know, people see these notables or these well-known individuals and they decide that they want 
to find out where they're from as well. Um, another reason people decide to take the test, it could be they are the family historian and they're doing genealogical research and maybe they've hit a plateau or they've hit a wall and they don't know which way to go. Or they're just looking for more finite information, which brings up the point, there's a difference between genealogy and genetics. We specialize in genetics. And what that means is we use your DNA to determine ancestry. Genealogy, on the other hand, determines ancestry by using oral histories, written records, um, really anything that's external to yourself. So there, there's a big difference between that. And so sometimes, like I said, people will find that they can't get any further, they can't get any information, or they just want to add another level to it or a more depth to what they've already found. And then sometimes people just want to take the test just because they want to know who they are. It's not even a second thought. It's not a whole, it's not a lot of thought to it. They just decide that they want to. So at that point, next step in the process is you purchase a test, whether you purchase it online or over the phone or at an event like Cometamorphosis this past weekend. Um, that's the point when you essentially pull the trigger on deciding that you want to know who you are. Um, so one of the tips that I have about that, that step in particular is research. Do the research, find out, figure out what it is that you want to know. Do you want to know about your mother's line? Do you want to know about your father's line? Are you interested in knowing something that's specific to one ancestral line as opposed to your overall genetic makeup. And once you decide what you want to know, how do you go about finding out? And at that point, if you're confused, you can give us a call. We can help you figure out um, what lines to test. And hey, sometimes people have already taken the test or they've had family members take the test. Call us and we'll help you out. We'll help you um, figure out what to do. Um, Let's see. Am I forgetting anything, Ty? No, keep going. You do have some questions. Campbell DeBoer wants to know, are your um, results ever wrong? Are our results ever wrong? Well, define wrong. <laughs> what do you mean by wrong exactly? Um, our results are as accurate as your DNA. And your DNA is coded is something that you can't change. You can't really alter. And we are testing a very small portion of your overall DNA mix. So, you know, I tend to err on the side of, side of are the results wrong? Well, is your DNA wrong? <laughs> um, but I mean, I can understand that question. But to me, it's, it really is. It's just based on it's your DNA. There's nothing wrong with your DNA. Whatever that DNA sequence is, that's what it is. And so we make a call based on that. And to keep in mind that we have a, a database of over 33,000 African lineages. So even if your DNA were to match more than one, if it matches more than one, that's what it is. We, we make that call. So um, I have any more questions? Because I know I've just been going on. Um, Free. I'm curious to find out if people get test results with more than one ethnic group similar to those. So let me first make a difference, with, make it clear that there's a difference between the test that other companies office, offer versus what we offer. What you get with other com companies is an overall DNA mix, which makes no distinction between ethnic groups, um, particular ancestral lines, meaning maternal lines, paternal lines. It's just your overall DNA mix. And for the most part, they don't have databases to support anything more specific than that. What African ancestry offers is are single line tests. So we, you can test a maternal line or a paternal line, which are the only two lines you can test um, with, with this type of DNA, with this type of uh, the tools that we have. So what we, again, what we offer is a single line test that can tell you um, where your maternal ancestors come from for 500 to 2000 years ago. We can also give you the same information about your paternal ancestor. ancestor. So in layman's turn, I can find out where my mom's people are and where my, my father's people come from. 
Um, and so because we do specialize in African results based on that huge database, we can give you an eth a specific ethnic group as well as a specific country. And sometimes people will have multiple ethnic groups and multiple countries. So does that answer your question, Bree? <laughs> <laughs> um, but let's get back to the steps. Where are we in the process? We order the test, right? So the first thing is, again, you make the decision, you research why you want to research, decide that you want to purchase the test. You make the purchase, whether it's online, on the phone, or like I said, at an event. Um, at that point, you start receiving email communication from us and the email lets you know that your test is on the way. It also includes very important information about how to successfully swab. So in that first email, you'll receive a video um, explaining how to swab properly and how to make sure you, you do it correctly. So, and this is even before you actually get the kit. So that should tell you how important it is <laughs> for you to start thinking about it. So at that point, you let's say you receive the kit. So this is what the kit looks like. Right. It comes in this envelope and this is a Matriclan kit. So if you were to get a Patriclan, it would be green. And in the kit, you get this handy little booklet, which is the terms and conditions, which is very important to read because it gives you information about how we handle your information. Um, what what steps for recourse you have, if you have any issues coming up. Um, and it also includes this barcode on the front, which is the kit ID number. The kit ID is truly that, it's the identifier for this particular test and for you. And we'll get to that later in the process, but it includes this information. Um, you also get two swab envelopes, which you use both of these. You get three packets of swabs with two swabs each. And then you also get a specimen information form. So this is where it gets a little hairy. <laughs> it gets a little hairy for some people. So when you receive your kit, what we ask is that you fill out the specimen information form, you utilize the swabs in order to provide us with the sample that we need in order to test your DNA. And again, the envelopes. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna point out is swabbing, the importance of swabbing properly. Please, 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 please read the instructions. Read the instructions, read the instructions. <laughs> Again, read the instructions. It's important that you swap properly because in order for the lab to be able to extract the DNA needed to give you the answer that you're looking for, you have to do it right from the start. So there are certain things that you aren't supposed to eat or drink. Um, you're not supposed to smoke. Um, let's see. Yep, don't use mouthwash, don't use toothpaste. They're, uh, but they're listed, these things are listed specifically. For some people that could be a little bit intimidating because they wanna, don't wanna mess up. So one of my tips is do the test or swab in the morning as soon as you wake up. Because nine times out of 10, you haven't had anything to eat or drink in three hours prior to you swabbing. You can drink water, you can rinse your mouth out. But at that point in the morning, it's the easiest to make sure that you've, you've swabbed properly. So going forward when you use the swabs you should end up with a total of six swabs three in each envelope i can't tell you the number of times that we receive <laughs> kits back in the office and people don't use all the swabs they think there are too many um they are unsure if it's supposed to be this many so they'll just put two in an envelope and send the one envelope back or they might put one in each envelope but we sent you six swabs and we want to get six back and we want to get three in each envelope um another thing to consider 
when you are swabbing or after you swab, let it dry um, before you put it in the envelope or you put it in the envelope. What is it? You put it in the envelope, right? And then let it dry. So you put it on a um, paper towel, let it dry, then put it in the yeah. So we don't get soiled. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sure you heard Ty. <laughs> but you can let it dry and then you put it in the envelope. Um, and then the next step is filling out the specimen information form. So please fill this out. This is what the test taker needs to fill out. You might have been the person to purchase the test. You might have gifted it to someone else and you want to keep up with what's going on with the process. But once the person take the, you give this test to someone else and they swab, the test becomes theirs. The information becomes theirs. And at that point, we have to be really, really careful about the information that we share. So this goes back to the kid ID number. Make note of the kid ID number. If you've purchased it and you want to, and you're not taking the test, but you want to keep up with what's going on, know the kid ID number. But the point is, the specimen information form needs to be filled out in its entirety. Make sure you put the name, mailing address, phone number, email. You know, sometimes people sometimes people don't have email addresses. That's fine. Um, but you make sure you fill out as much information as you possibly can here on the front. On the back, we ask some questions about your mother or your father's ethnicity, home state. Make sure you fill that out. And this little section here where you initial is especially important. Note, if this is not filled out, it can stop or stall the entire process. The reason that this is important is, this is an acknowledgement that for Metroclan test takers, there's a 92% chance of getting an African result. For Patroclan test takers, it's 65%, a 65% chance that you'll get an African result. And this has to be initial in order for your swabs to move through the process. So make sure you fill this out or initial this every single time you take a test because uh, you give a test away or you, you share with a test with someone. Um, and this oh, and this last section is for an alternate mailing address. So if this, again, let's say you purchase a test for someone else, but you want the results to come to you or you've asked that, that other that person not read the results and, and send them your way. You can actually put your mailing address here or the other person's mailing address here and the results will be mailed to that address. If not, we always default to what's on the front of the sheet or front of the, of the specimen information form. That goes back to filling it in for me, make sure it's legible. We manually enter these forms in and sometimes handwriting can be a little difficult. I wear glasses. People that help me enter this information in wear glasses. Sometimes it's a little difficult for us to understand handwriting. So make sure you write legibly and as clearly as you possibly can. Sometimes we've had family members take um, pre-printed return address labels and stick them right on the form. And then that way is, you know, no issue with the handwriting. Um, if you think that your handwriting might be a little hard to understand, don't hesitate to give us a call and let us know that some information needs to be updated or you want to double check it. But we, the thing is, we want to make sure that it's entered in the system properly the first time. So when the results are produced, the information is, is correct. Um, let me see. I got to stop and check for some more questions. Any more questions, Ty? Um, <laughs> okay. All right. So you filled out the specimen information form. You did the swabbing. You return. You you mailed back um, the samples, and so at that point, the samples are received here in our office. Um, Oh, let me back up. When you mail them in, please note that the envelope that we provide for you to mail your samples back in are first class USPS stamps. So there's no tracking information. Um, we ask that you allow seven to 10 business days for us to receive uh, the, the samples. Um, but another tip, if you aren't, aren't comfortable with that, 
we encourage you to go ahead and pay a little bit more for shipping and do um, priority mail. So there's a tra tracking number or FedEx or any any service you would like to use that has tracking. It doesn't hurt to do that because, you know, this is very important and delicate information that you're returning to us. So we want to make sure it gets here safely. Um, but you've mailed your kits in. We received it. Everything's fine. And so what happens at that point is, again, we take the specimen information form. We manually enter the information. We prepare the swabs to go to our lab. Um, and, and once we've received the, the form and prepared the, the samples, we tag you. We let you know that we've received it. So you were, so this is where the email chain really picks up um, through the process. So when you receive this email, it'll let you know, one, that your journey has began, begun. We have received the samples. And at that point, we'll give you an estimated time frame for analysis. And it's an eight to 10 week period. And that time is quoting when we expect to receive your, your analysis back in our office to be prepared um, for the results packet. So, you know, we get it in. We we receive everything. We get it prepared. You get tagged. You have all the information that you need um, <clears throat> about your samples showing up. And so this is where we ask that you're patient. This is where the process can, you know, lull a little bit. Um, you have to wait it out because we send the swabs to our lab. Um, the lab will take a set amount of time to test and process the samples. And at that point, they extract your DNA sequence. So I like to look at it like, it's your specific DNA code, your genetic coding. Um, this raw information is what our scientific team will use to do an analysis and determine a result. So it, you know, it can vary in how much time it takes, but they usually turn this information around pretty quickly. And from there, they send that information over to the scientific team, which includes Dr. Rick Kittles and Dr. Stanley Hooker. Um, from there, Dr. Kittles will take your genetic code and he compares it or he analyzes it partially by comparing it to the database. How he does it is, is totally his process. Um, we have no part in, in that part of it. It's strictly a scientific um, endeavor. <laughs> so, you know, Dr. Kittles will take the information. He is manually uh, analyzing this DNA and making the determination on what your ancestry is. So I say that because we ask for patience during that process. Dr. Kittles is, he is certainly a busy person, but he is taking the time and looking at your specific DNA sequence and making a specific call. And that does take time. It does you know, take um, concentration and it, it requires work. So again, we ask that you remain patient during that time. Now, in the, during this time, you will receive some emails from us. Um, you'll receive an email, you know, checking in to see how you're feeling about the process. You'll also um, get some inf get a video from Dr. Kittles where he's answering some of your frequently asked questions about the scientific part of it. Um, you'll also get a couple of check in, uh, another check in email, you know, talking about the first top five countries. Um, just checking to see how you're doing, because it is it is a process and it is something that requires, you know, a, like I said, a little bit of a lull in the communication overall. So. We're finally reaching the point where we get into the end end of um, the most immediate part of the process. So. Dr. Kittles, he makes the he does the analysis. And what will happen is he sends the information over to our office. So that's when I get the info. <laughs> I get the spreadsheets. And from there, we have to tr essentially transform the data that Dr. Kittles sends over into these wonderful packages. I don't think I have one. Thank you. So I don't want to show anybody's information here, anybody's personal info. Yeah. Okay. So what you will receive in the results documents, 
Hmm? Okay, well, Ty put a graphic up. So that's what I, <laughs> so that's what I, the results documents will look like. So you'll get a certificate of ancestry, a letter with your specific G DNA sequence, as well as a reiteration of what your certificate of ancestry says, as well as a now that you know. And the now that you know includes information about how the science works. Um, more frequently asked questions is just a better way of understanding your results. And if you have results that are, let's say, have multiple ethnic groups or multiple countries, we'll include additional information to help you process and synthesize that information as well. Um, so to give some perspective, your letters are full of details and information that can make or break your experience. So we ask, or I ask that you keep that in mind because when Dr. Kittle sends the results back to me or the analysis back to me and we produce your letters, we have to make sure that the grammar is right, that the spelling of your name is correct, your address is correct. Um, any, of, any of those things that might seem small, but ultimately can put a damper on the information if, you, if it's not processed correctly or if it's not treated with care. So it's another space where we ask for patients, ask that you understand that we're human and, and that it does take time. And we are stewards of this experience for you and we want it to be a good one for you. Um, so what's the next step, Ty? I know you guys are tired of hearing about all these steps and all these this process. <laughs> yeah, so the results at this point have been prepared and we shipped them. So the results are we default to mailing the results via USPS Postal First Class Mail. Again, that doesn't include tracking. So we do encourage people to upgrade their shipping to USPS Priority or um, FedEx if you would like to have tracking and you, you would like to be able to follow the journey of your package. Um, there are a few places in the overall process where we we are totally fine with you upgrading your shipping. So if you decide that you want to purchase a kit and you want to get it sooner rather than later, there's an opportunity to upgrade your shipping at the initial order. Um, if you have a time constraint or you are trying to get your results back by a certain time, although we don't guarantee that we can have something back to you on a very on a specific date, you can still. Um, let us know that you need it by a certain time and then you can upgrade your shipping accordingly. So, you know, if someone needed results by this Friday and they happen to come in on Monday, we'll let you know and you'll have the opportunity to upgrade your shipping in order to have that information by Friday. It's something that we're willing to work with you about. We just, you know, need to need everyone to be as proactive as they possibly can be in the process. So um, and then you get your results. So the next step, I think, is you sign up for the African American on African Ancestry online community on Facebook. Um, it's an awesome platform for people who have taken the test to share what their experience has been like, to share what they've done with their results after they've gotten the results. Um, it's a good way to meet people. You'll end up meeting people who have the same results as you. And there are people who join who don't necessarily get. Um, an African result. It's just it's just a great community um, to share and exchange with. And then by being a part of that, you get access to certain things before the general public because, you know, Gina might decide, oh, I'll share some information with the with the online community because, you know, they've been here, they've been through the experience. So there are perks to being a part of the online community. Um, I don't really see any reason why you wouldn't be. Can you think of anything, Ty? Yeah, they're. I mean, they're, they're, really, they're really awesome. They they teach each other. They teach us. They're, we actually don't have to really <laughs> answer a whole lot of questions because the online community has got it under control. So, um, and then there's some other things that you can do after you've gotten your results. We have plenty of things for you to get into. One of the first things you can do is order a T-shirt. Once you, you find your results and you find a country, we have a T-shirt for that country. 
if you find that you don't, if you don't have an African result, there's still t-shirts that you can purchase. Um, you can also purchase additional certificates. So like I, I mentioned before in the results package, you get a certificate of ancestry. You can always purchase certificates of ancestry for other family members, because remember the results apply to more than one person. Um, the results apply to an entire ancestral line. And remember those lines branch out. So it's not just your mom and your grandmother, it's your aunt, it's your cousin, it's your, you know, it's a sibling. Um, and, and certificates are actually a really easy gift. And it holds powerful information because it tells you who you are. Um, another thing that you can do is purchase a pendant. I know y'all see this, right? It's been shining. <laughs> you, can, you can't help but notice it. But um, one of the things that was introduced this year are heirloom pendants. Uh, right now, we... So, well, let me give you a, a quick breakdown of what it includes. So um, it includes a stone where your country, where the country is, a country of ancestry is. And on the back... You can have your name, your ethnic group, as well as your country. So my my maternal line traces to the Mende people of Sierra, Sierra Leone. So my pendant has my name and it has Mende people in Sierra Leone. And the blue stone is the country of Sierra Leone. It's blue resin, blue resin. <laughs> but if you like stones, you can have them customized. So there are a few that have already been set up. So we have um, Cameroon, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Guinea-Bissau, um, and Gabon. Ghana is coming. Uh, huh? It's here? Okay, Ghana is here. And then really any other country can be produced. It, it, it would be considered um, a customized, but you can you can do it any way you want to. Like for for instance, some men who have taken both tests, um, or any people anybody who knows their maternal and their paternal, they request to have all of the countries placed um, on on the pendant. So if it fits, I think you know they can make it happen, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and another thing, we have a few things here. Right now, we are offering ornaments, holiday ornaments. So for 2018, this is a 2018 African ancestry ornament. And we are in the middle of a holiday season. It's going to be going for a while. And we think that this would be the perfect thing to have hanging on your tree. Even if you choose to not have a tree, because everyone doesn't celebrate the same holidays, this is a good way to commemorate, let's say the year you decided to take the test. Um, or if you've been a part of the family for a while, 2018 is when these were first produced and you want to be a part of that first bunch, right? You want to be a part of the cool kids who knew what was going on. You know, <laughs> we knew you knew what was happening. So, you know, this is a dope gift. I, I have one. I'm going to purchase some and hang on my tree. And I am known as the office Scrooge. And so if I'm the office Scrooge and I'm buying these, you need to buy them too. <laughs> um, and then something else that we're offering right now are holiday cards. Um, well, this is note cards. It's not just holiday, but these you can use these year round. But these are these really, these are really awesome. Um, our president designed these. She had a hand in, in putting these together. Um, and they're just, 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 they're just dope. It's so, it's very little that I could say to really capture the idea of there's a note card with an Ankara print that has African ancestry. Um, we sell these in packs of four. It's four packs of four. Um, how much are these? 10? Yeah. So is it $10? Okay, <laughs> um, 10 or 12, no, don't know the exact price, but you get four of these. Um, these are awesome to share. So for instance, if you decide to buy certificates for people, you can include a, a note card, you can write down why 
um, you thought it was important for them to have the information, or you can just give them a card because it's a really dope card. It's really nice. Um, but another thing that we have is head wraps. So these are awesome. I wear head wraps. Everyone in this office wear head, wears a head wrap. Great for those bad hair days. Great for those great hair days. It doesn't matter. <laughs> these are dope and they come in multiple prints. Um, I don't have all of them here with me, but this is something that's a really good gift. You can, you don't just have to give it to women. Everyone assumes that, you know, just women want to wrap their hair, but the fabric is so nice. You can give it to a man and he can wear it as a scarf. You know, he can um, hang it as, as like a tapestry. Even so, there are a lot of things that you can do with these head wraps, but this is actually my favorite uh, table setting. Yeah, um, this is actually my favorite print. So I say, check it out. I say, give it a chance. Uh, <laughs> and I have two more things to show you guys. So here's we have fans um, that are how much are these top? Eighteen. So there's 20. So these were um, handmade in Ghana. They are beautiful for decoration. They're beautiful for, they're clearly fans. So, you know, there's a practical use for them, but these are beautifully constructed. Again, beautiful fabrics. We have more than one print. is a great gift to, to give anyone, um, really. I personally am going to give one to my grandmother who keeps fans. She's just one of those people. I have a couple of friends that keeps fan. They, they love fans. So why not give them something in, in a beautiful and car print? Um, and last but not least, journals. Where the journals tie. <laughs> So Ty is getting a journal right now, but I, I personally am always excited about the journals because I do journal writing. I encourage others to do journal writing. And so um, the journals are an excellent gift or something that you can purchase for yourself even before you get your results back. Um, here we go. Look at that, y'all. How can you not love that? Can you see that? <laughs> so the journals are also an awesome gift, like I said, to give to other people, to have for yourself. Um, I personally think that the journals are great for documenting the entire experience. It, you are getting information um, with this test that a lot of people never thought we'd ever be able to have. Um, it's the kind of information that people have kind of resigned themselves to never having it. And now you have the opportunity to find out who you are in a definitive way. And that is something to process. And your journal is where you can put down your thoughts, your feelings. You can even use it in your genealogical journey. Um, if you are, again, a family historian, you can keep notes in here about family members or about what you find on that journey and then, you know, share that. Um, I see journal, a journal as your personal handbook and as your, your legacy. It's something that you can leave behind for your family to read um, generations into the future. So journal is my favorite. So <clears throat> Ty, is there anything else that I need to show? <laughs> Nothing? Okay. Well, so just to recap, I'm going to give you 10 quick tips to make the process, your process with African ancestry successful, as well as a bonus one. So the first thing is again, research, research, research before you make the purchase. And even if you have questions after you've made the purchase, give us a call so you know 
what you're getting. You don't want to be surprised in the end. You don't want to be disappointed just because you didn't know um, all the information. So just let us know. Let us know if you have questions. But again, research, 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 research. And we are more than happy to answer questions for you here in the office. You can also go to AfricanAncestry.com to get some information. You can even go to African Ancestry social media platforms and get information because we share it all over. Um, the next thing is get clear about what you want to know. Do you want to know about the African in your American? Or do you want to know about your mother's line, your father's line? Do you want to know about your great grandfather's line, your great grandmother's line? Find, just figure out what it is that you want to know. Get clear about it. And it makes it a little easier for us to help guide you in the right direction. Um, and then again, if you don't know, you can say, I don't know. We'll help you get there. But you have to get clear about you know, what you want to find out and what the expectations are. Um, Another tip is upgrade the shipping if you have timing constraints. So if you need your kit to be there by a certain time, upgrade the ship, the, the shipping. It's worth it to have the tracking. It's worth it to know what's going on with the package, even when you can't see it for yourself. The same thing for your results. If you have something that um, has a time constraint on it, let us know and be prepared to upgrade the shipping. Gifts. You still have time to purchase gifts for the holidays. If you need your T-shirts, if you need your your um, your hair wraps, if you need your journals, any of that stuff, upgrade the ship. It's an investment that's worth it. It gives you peace of mind. Um, and again, we can track what's happening with your package as it's coming to you. Um, the fourth tip is save the kit IDs. Again, just because you purchase the test doesn't mean that you automatically get information about it if you are not the test taker. If you are the test taker, make sure you have your kid ID number ready to go because when you call in and you have questions or if you email us and you have questions, it's much easier for us to find the information you need and give you up to date, accurate information um, as quickly as possible. So, again, kit ID numbers. That number is also important because. Once your swabs make it to the lab, you are that. That's your identity is the number. The lab, the scientific team, they don't know your name, your address. They don't know any of that information. They know the kid ID number. Um, next tip, write legibly and fill out all of the documents completely. So when you get um, specimen information form, write as clearly as you possibly can and fill in all the information. Remember, it's necessary for you to put your name, your mailing address and, and, and the initials on the back acknowledging the percentage of being able to get of, of the likely percentage of you getting an African result. If you don't fill that out, it stops the process and the clock starts all over again if we have to stop the process at, you know, at any point. Um. The next step is open and read the emails from African Ancestry. We don't send you a whole lot of emails, but the emails that we do send have really important pieces of information. There's a results timing tracker for all of the emails that you get after we've received your swabs or once we've received your swabs. So that way, you know what the eight to 10 week window looks like for you. Um, we send you information again on how to swab properly. We send you information about the process itself, the science behind it, um, with information directly from Dr. Kittles. Um, and we also send you some information from time to time of special events. So, for instance, um, the Burkina Faso Embassy is holding an event, which I'll give you more details about that in a minute. But if you had a Burkina, a Burkina Faso result, you would have that information in your inbox and you would be able to attend the event. So just make sure you open the emails. So the, the next tip I have is be patient and be realistic. Be patient. Mm, patience and be realistic. So we again, we asked for your patience. Remember, this is an eight to week, pro eight to 10 week process. It has a lot of moving parts, um, a lot of details that we need to pay close attention to. And 
again, like I mentioned earlier, we're stewards of an experience. And so we have to make sure that all of the steps are followed, make sure all the information is accurate. And we have everything that we need in order to give you a quality product. Um, and also be realistic. So when I say be a realistic, it means you can't send your swabs here and think you're going to have results in the week. Again, it's an eight to week, eight to 10 week process. Um, we don't guarantee times because, again, you know, we never know what's going. We don't know what might pop up in the process. We don't know what might get held up or, you know, what will happen. So we don't want to make guarantees or make promises that we can't. We can't keep. So let's see. Another tip. Don't wait to call us if you think there's an issue. For instance, if you mail your swabs in and you haven't heard anything back after the 10 business day window, call us and that way we will be on alert and we'll be paying attention to whether or not those, those swabs are coming in. You can't wait until three months later <laughs> and you know, expect for us to automatically know what's going on. If you think there's an issue, go ahead and call us sooner rather than later. And then that way it won't to add any additional or it won't add as much additional time to the process, which ultimately means additional time to when you will receive your results, when you'll get to find out who you are. So just give us a call sooner rather than later or email us if you feel like there might be an issue. And, and, and by being proactive, we can kind of get ahead of it. Um, and next tip. Like I said, join the AAOC, African Ancestry Online Community. It's a great resource. There are a lot of questions that we we can't even answer here in the office, um, but the online community can. And they have great ideas about how to utilize the information that you receive. Um, they have information about events around the country, around the world. You could hear people's stories about what they chose to do with their results. Like we've had people who have moved to the continent. We've had people who have started nonprofits based on their results. Um, there are people who've changed their names. So the AAOC is a really, 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 really good resource. So we encourage you to use that. Um, almost through, almost finished. Um, next to last tip, please treat us with respect. We are human beings and we are working with a lot of information for a lot of people that are excited and are anxious. And so we feel the excitement, we feel the anxiety, and we can also feel when you're upset. So it's okay to be upset. It's okay to have, um, to take issue with things here and there, but please be respectful. We are providing you with a very important service, um, but our willingness and our enthusiasm in providing that service do not, does not mean that we need to be disrespected. <laughs> so no need to be rude. <laughs> um, and as a bonus, Tip, I say treat this as an investment even after you've gotten your results. Um, for instance, we had someone call today who was interested in purchasing heirloom pendants for their grandchildren, 12 grandkids. And this is someone who I'm assuming has taken the test in, you know, maybe not even the last year. They're, they, they're a standing family member. And they've decided that they wanted to invest in their grandkids, knowing who they are by purchasing heirloom pendants. If you can't necessarily afford an heirloom pendant right now, you can get a certificate and share it with someone. Certificates are eleven dollars and there's no shipping. So it's easy for you to share that information um, with someone in your family who might not have known, who might need to know who they are. Um, Invest in T-shirts, invest in, in things that go to you knowing who you are and owning it even after you've gotten the results. So that's it. I'm done preaching. I'm, I'm done fussing about <laughs> you guys doing the process correctly, making our lives a little bit easier. Uh, but so I have a, a note here. Oh, this is pretty awesome. So I want to give a shout out to Katio Basau, 
who will be relocating to Guinea-Bissau permanently in February of 2019. Um, we're looking forward to hearing all about the journey and hope that you'll be an amazing resource in the online community. Um, that's a really brave thing, right? Like to relocate to a totally different country. And Katio, we wish you well. Um, we appreciate your support. And again, we'd love to hear about your experience. Um, thank you. So, all right, Ty, what else I got to say? Kevin, you can order certificates either online or over the phone with us. Um, if you choose to order online, make sure you have the kit ID number and the names that you want to have on the certificates. Um, if you aren't comfortable doing it that way, you can give us a call and we can take the order for you over the phone. Again, have that kit ID number and we can take it from there. Am I missing anything else? Oh, my homegirl, Shantae. <laughs> Shante says, my experience was amazing. My results changed my life. She is, can I share it, Shante? I'm going to share it because we're cousins. So she is Mende of Sierra Leone as well. And she's one of my oldest friends. So um, people in my life have been positively impacted by taking this test. So I know it's going to work the same way for you when you get your results and you find out who you are. Um, but I think it's time for me to wrap it up. You got anything else for me, Ty? Other than I, the the list. <laughs> All right. So I want to make sure I mention before we go this weekend, Gina will be at the True to Our Native Land event in Brooklyn, New York, Friday and Saturday. She will be revealing the maternal and the paternal ancestry of Chief Ayanda Clark. Ayanda Clark. Um, also. Is there anything else going on this weekend? I feel like I'm forgetting something, but it'll come up. Um, but next week, the takeover continues with my colleague, Kelly Bowman. Um, she'll be talking about testing um, multiple family lines. The broadcast will start a little bit earlier than usual. It'll be 5 p.m. Um, but it's Kelly. Most people who have taken the test, they know Kelly. Kelly's pretty famous out there amongst the African ancestry family. Yeah. If you call the office, she's going to be the one to pick up. <laughs> if you have issues with your order, she's the one who's going to resolve it. So um, next week should be a pretty good show. Kelly knows what she's talking about. She's a vet. So I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching and bear with me. It's my first takeover. I hope I get to do it again. Um, leave comments. Let us know. If you, you have any questions, if you have any more, if, if there's any more information that you need. Uh, you got anything else, Tar? So I'm just going to peace out. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. See you next week or see you in the future. I don't know. I'm not going to.